Good afternoon, Brian with Grant Roofing. We're up on a roof doing a roof measurement inspection for a roof estimate, but uh, point of this video, we're gonna focus right around here at this area. I was told that there was a leak around this front porch area and to investigate, make sure we get it addressed, get it fixed if we end up getting the job. So typically when you've got an area like this where you've got a little wall coming up into an area that is a little fascia valley return, fascia board coming into it, goes into another section, whatever the case it may be in this, it's a little valley, dormer area. There's typically two things I see that go wrong. So let's switch the camera around and see what that might be. Hopefully if you're a DIYer, you can see what to do and what not to do. And if you do it wrong, what happens? If you're a homeowner, a little bit uh, uh, tips on uh, doing some due diligence on and investigating your potential contractor of choice with reviews and things. So let's switch the camera around. I can't see my screen. I think I'm still, yeah. All right, let's see what we can learn. I apologize, it's so bright out, I can barely see my screen here. All right, so you got some rotten wood right here, and luckily, if there is a bright side to this, it is out over a porch, not inside the house, causing like bigger health issues inside with drywall, dropping down, mold, mildew, whatever. Nevertheless, there is some serious rot going on, probably even worse framing now because of this. What we typically see going on when you have a section coming up is there's an area where this fascia board behind the gutter comes into the roof deck. Usually it's buried in so tight, they notch a shingle, like an L shape to go up around it, and they don't flash that. Or they shove it up under all the way like it is here. Hopefully you can see it goes up under all the way. But the second issue I see when they do this is at some point they have to transition from the shingle here to the valley sides and unfortunately on this it didn't go up far enough it's a sloppy cut we'll look at in a minute and they're missing one piece of flashing at the top to get it on top of this row you mix that with a bad lace of the valley all this section up here has got water gathering running down the valley and this should have been dropped down too with a piece of flashing under it and then laced the valley here unfortunately that's not the case we have a bit of a gaping hole right here due to a really bad kind of piss poor attempt at flashing cutting this i really hope this was a diyer that didn't do a little studying and sh just i really hope it's not a contractor that did that because that's bad right here's the point of entry where water's coming in i don't know what this is crazy attempt at a water diverter maybe but look at the gaping hole right there and that is in a horrible spot for water to come down right down a valley channeling everything to this little point going right in down to the roof deck. Now it's under this layer of shingles, working its way down, kind of trapped stagnant on the paper if they've got it, rotting it out. And I'd say it's safe to say that you probably got some structural or some rafter tail. Rafters need to be repaired in this area now because of this. So it could have been a very simple one piece of flashing, one piece of shingle a little further, not cut so sloppy. Could have made this last quite a while. The roof is a little old, I'd guess 15 to 25 years, somewhere in that range, it's older. So this has been going on for a while and that's why I think there could be some rotten rafters in here. Oh, my phone's not functioning right. Hey, we're still going. All right, so if you are a DIYer, look up some successful tips on how to flash a return like this. Just take a few extra minutes, make sure if you need a visual, watch up some videos, look up some videos on it. Little detail it can go a long way. I mean, anyone can make it look good. You want to make sure it lasts. And if you're a homeowner looking at getting an estimate from contractors, do your due diligence. Don't just look at the price. Look at the estimates, compare estimate from estimate. Look at the contractor and make sure you do a little due diligence and digging on them. How many reviews do they have? Are they good? Are they bad? What's the ratio? If they have bad ones, look at the reviews. Was it just something about they couldn't keep time or was it because they caused leaks and didn't take care of it? You're gonna learn a lot from that. Also on the review mark, block the phone here. It's really windy and getting crazier. So if you're looking at reviews, you also wanna make sure the platform you're using, typically Google is a pretty good one. If you've got some like Angie's List sold out, so Home Advisor and some of those, BBB, Better Business Bureau, it's a joke because you can pay to play in a sense. You can actually pay to wipe away bad reviews. You can also pay to gain reviews. So their business model is bringing in traffic and volume and selling it out to other people. You want to avoid those. You want to use platforms that people cannot manipulate the reviews. I know it sounds, it sounds a little more difficult to actually do and it's not easy. You're just gonna have to put a little bit of elbow grease into it, do a little due diligence. If you want your roof on your house for many years to come to protect you and your family and keep your well-being, you know, health, health and safety of the home, protect your asset, if that's what you wanna call it, take a few extra minutes to do some due diligence on the contractor that you're planning on trying to use and just vet them, just make sure. And their warranty too, make sure it's not a taillight warranty. Make sure their warranty is gonna last longer than the issues that are going to arise. That's the biggest I see in the industry. If you could, give it a thumbs up. I hope it helps. I know it's not simple, but as I said, a little extra time in it because that's going to be on your roof for quite a while. You, you hope, you plan. So anyway, until next time, be safe, and we'll see you on the next video.